squat. Do you have pain with that? Yeah. Okay. Does one side feel stiff at all, or do they both feel pretty good? They both feel good. Nice. And how about a how about a single leg squat? What's your level of comfort? Do you have any pain with that? Do you feel like stiffness in the front of the knee, or more in the front? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We're filming. Sweet. All right. So we so we have um, an ACL injury on one side, and then like compensatory patellofemoral pain on the other side. I think. Do, do, where do you typically feel your pain? Is it on the inside, or is it underneath the kneecap, or? Okay. We're just sort of... Okay. So um, yeah, let's just have a look one more time at a single leg squat on each side coming down as far as feel comfortable. So one thing is we see like a really quad dominant movement pattern. Like he's, he's really like pushing his knee forward to squat. Let's try the other side. And so that that in itself is something we wanted to probably talk about and work on with him. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Um, how about jump and land? So on this side, you can tell me what your level of comfort is. I think we just probably want to look at like this movement skill first and try maybe three of those. Okay. Do you feel a bit of discomfort with that? Yeah. Is it in the knee or is it in the quad there where you? Okay. Yeah, more when you're running? Do you know at what point in your running it is? Like, is it sort of push off, or is it when you're driving up, or when you're sort of when your when your leg is kind of reaching for the ground? More pushing off. Yeah. Okay. So like driving, explosive force. How about um? How about then like a single leg, more explosive, just sort of try to like jump off one foot. Is that all you? The back of the knee. Okay. Try the other side. Okay, can I just get your live face up? So this one, um, this this actually doesn't really look like maybe a typical patellofemoral pain. Um, typical patellofemoral pain, we're gonna get like soreness around the kneecap. Uh, typical jumper's knee, we're gonna get soreness right here. So there's something else kind of going on there. This one has been diagnosed with an MRI as uh, ACL deficient. So we can just have a quick look at that. And, um, and then I'm gonna show you how to tape this one. Just want to relax here. So we're looking at like a Lachman test. How far, how much movement do we have? We can look at um, like the thumb relative to this finger here, and just kind of see. Uh, in this case, probably about like nine to ten millimeters of movement between the thumb and, and finger. So if we're testing that versus the other side and we see that it's more on this side, um, that would kind of get us uh, pretty suspicious in combination with the mechanism of like, did a twist, felt a pop or something like that. You can just lie on your back for a second. And then the other um, test is like a pivot shift. Relax. So we can see here, that's a positive pivot shift test, which is for like being ACL deficient. It doesn't hurt at this stage. And when did your injury happen? Last summer. Last summer. So it's been, you know, maybe nearly a year. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of see that clunkiness. So if he's describing feeling that his knee is um, a little bit unstable at times with turning or like that's what he's going to be feeling, right? Um, if he hasn't injured any other structures in his knee, then it can be non-painful if his meniscus is in good condition and all that kind of stuff. So he's actually able to um, continue with play according to like return to sport uh, progressions and um, as long as uh, we're very safe and careful along each step oh, yeah. of that way um, you know there are some people who are actually gonna maybe have this level of instability and continue to play for their whole life or career um, and opt not to have a surgery and that's something that's sort of being explored more and more often these days but it's a, on a case-by-case -case basis um, Okay, so for K-taping, do you currently do any taping for ACL? Mm -hmm. um, what we want to do is find uh, three strips. We're going to have two, or sorry, three squares worth of two, two strips. So 
So I'll just cut a six first and then um, trim that. Just trimming the corners so that the corners will not be um, uh, easy to pull up or easy to catch on things. So we'll put these ones on first. We'll take the knee up to 90 degrees. We find um, the, the medial collateral and lateral collateral ligament. So if you find the joint line by running down the femoral condyle and you hit the joint line here, pretty easy to see and feel for him. If you start coming across, you get to something where that joint, like you can no longer sit your finger into the joint line and that's the MCL. Do you have any pain with that there? Um, you know, sometimes like uh, uh, if he'd recently injured it, he might have a little bit of soreness on the MCL there or if he had more of a, um, a, a degree of injury to the MCL. Now, if we need to, we can um, use some uh, adhesive spray to help this stick. Um, we're, uh, we're sort of full stretch through the middle and then throwing down the last, um, you know, square worth or inch at least uh, without, without any stretch on it. So that part's going to be your anchor and this part is on full stretch. Um, this is meant to simulate or, or enhance the proprioceptive um, awareness or information that's coming into your body and into your brain um, by st stimulating or sort of simulating the rigidity of these ligaments um, by being on a full stretch so it's sort of it's called a ligamentous taping technique with with k-taping and most k-taping that's on muscles is never going to be on full stretch like that so um, so that's like you know a special case of what you do when you're working with over top of a ligament. Um, here, depends on the length of the leg, we're gonna get into the hamstrings. And so you could, if you want, just measure kind of like that and be like, oh, that's about as far as I wanna go. You know, in, in a lot of cases, it's gonna be somewhere between 10 and 12 squares. Um, you're gonna trim. And so yeah, this goes with uh, rock tape, kinesio tape, K tape. Um, those are those are the brands that that uh, we like the best. Um, some brands adhesives don't really seem to stick so well. Um, but yeah, like if you've already been warming up and playing and stuff like that, at this stage you're gonna need to you're gonna need to use some like adhesive spray in order to make sure that this athlete can like get back into play or something. Whereas if he's got um, half an hour before he starts to warm up, it's perfect. Um, it's gonna start to stick gradually. It's gonna stick better and better. Um, and so it's gonna be able to be ready for the start of his practice. So here, um, we've got this at the top of the tibia. So if you're running up the tibia with your finger and then the tibia starts to kind of disappear, um, so it, lining up with the tibial tuberosity or the bottom of the joint line is where this is at. Um, now we start thinking about this edge of the tape and it's got to get onto the hamstring tendon here. Um, but we don't want it like behind the hamstring tendon. So you can see I'm trying to like run my fingers along the tape and, and generate a curve that, that takes that right down to that hamstring tendon. Um, that's the tricky part. Then we're going to get onto, we've got like our last little anchor bit here again, um, where my thumb is and we're just gonna kind of take that up uh, into the hamstring roll that last little bit off without any stretch and notice that the mid portion there was probably just a like you know 10 to 20 percent stretch so it's not a stabilizing tape job this is all neuromuscular um, then we come around this side and same deal it's exactly the same, right? So we're just trying to make that curve. We're trying to get them to take the tape um, back onto the hamstrings and um, get that last little bit on without any stretch. Notice I'm trying to be really careful not to touch the adhesive on the tape because if you touch it, it's gonna get the oils from your fingers and stuff like that. And it's just not gonna stick as well anymore. After it's on, you wanna heat it up a little bit and that's gonna start the adhesive to sticking a little bit better. Now if we could come back up to standing. So test retest with ACL, we could have done a lot more to try to figure out what all movement patterns he's he's kind of struggling with. So we looked at a single leg squat and it looks kind of wiggly. We can look at your single leg squat again and just see if you subjectively feel like it's any better. So we're just looking at that. We'll try like three of them. You know, so maybe we're feeling optimistic, right? But. Um, we would want to probably look at some other things like a lateral hop and stick 
or things like you know a two foot just hop like if, if you're earlier on in that progression um, two foot hop and sort of stick uh, one foot hop and stick with rotation and kind of like going in both directions figure out what what kind of things that he's struggling with um, we'll have other ones like um, like a single single leg forward hop and stick your landing um, do you want to tie your right shoe and then we can try that on the <laughs> We'll speed this part of the video up. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so maybe take a step back and then just try uh, on your right leg um, a hop forward. Just try to stick your landing. Well, you can do the first one with two legs if you want. Uh, you can, no. So, okay, first one, just do this, right? Think about the stability you're creating. Go. Good. Yeah, come back. Second one. Now, from your right foot to your right foot, stick. Ideally, hold your position for two seconds. Excellent. So you're proving that you stick it, right? Do that on the left side. Good, so for good function, we probably want to take this up and be a little bit more aggressive, right? Like this is, he's not going for his kind of max distance just yet, but we can warm this up and then try to get to a maximum distance on the right and see if you can achieve the same level of function on the left. And if we've done that kind of testing pre-taping, we do it again post-taping, then we should be able to understand um, if our tape job is actually helping this guy. Um, yeah, definitely uh, another one to look at is that kind of lateral hop and stick. Sometimes people are gonna feel discomfort as they're trying to like actually push off of that leg um, or as they're stabilizing and they'll notice that cleans up after the taping. So you're gonna have like um, a result where this person gets out on the field and they now feel more comfortable with cutting movements and stuff like that off of that leg. So um, it's surprising, but a lot of times, even though this is not like a hardcore stabilizing tape job, people with ACLs really love it. Okay. That's how smooth it's there. Uh, yeah, for this one here, this looks different. This looks like maybe, um, I don't know, hamstring muscle strain or something.